हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ शबीना खानम एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी रुड़की एंड हियर आई एम इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू विद एन एन पी टी ई एल ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स ऑन प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन ओके एज फार एज दिस कोर्स इज़ कंसर्न दिस कोर्स इज़ वेरी बेनिफिशियल फॉर केमिकल इंजीनियर्स बिकॉज हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिज़ाइन ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट इक्विपमेंट विच आर यूज एक्सटेंसिवली इन केमिकल प्रोसेस ओके सो एज यू नो दैट द कोर्स इज ऑन प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन इफ आई आस्क यू ओके इफ आई आस्क यू दैट वॉट इज अ प्रोसेस वॉट इज एन इक्विपमेंट एंड वॉट इज design okay so as far as process is concerned that i think being an chemical engineer you all know that uh, process is basically a method or a route through which we can convert raw material into the product okay so that is the basic definition of the process equipment where we convert the raw material into product so that is basically the unit in which we convert raw material into the product okay and design that you all know that design means to decide the dimension of the equipment to decide the internal structure and uh, accessories which are uh, accessories which are associated uh, to an equipment all that we have to decide through proper designing and designing means you do not have to draw you have to carry out some calculation some steps so that you can reach to the final dimension of the equipment okay so as you know this is uh, the so as you know that the course is on process equipment design this is a 12 week course and today we are starting this course with the first lecture of first week and that is on the introduction so here we will first introduce this subject and we will ba basically we will make the basis so that you will understand that what is the necessary or what is the necessity for you to study this course first of all we will develop that basis and then we will uh, discuss design of each equipment one by one so before starting design of process equipment okay before start starting the design of process equipment we will first discuss what is process design okay where the design of equipment is a part okay but where actually you have to focus on while uh, studying this course or while uh, going through this subject where you can contribute in process design that we have to focus first as you already know that we are developing the basis that uh, why you should study this course okay so let me first focus on process design so here i would like to mention that i so here i would like to mention that i have prepared the slides in slightly detailed manner so that you can get proper study material along with the um detailed concepts okay so you may find that some slides may have uh, more con content and some slide may have less content but my purpose is that i should provide sufficient study material in this course only in this video only and along with uh, i should uh, speak about the concepts in depth okay so let's start with the process design now as far as process design is concerned as i have already told that what is a process it is basically the route to convert raw material into product okay so what is so what is a process design okay so first of all let me study this uh, let me read the sentence and then we will discuss the uh, factors or the uh, content available in this one by one okay so as far as process design is concerned it basically establishes the sequence of chemical and physical operations operating conditions duties major specifications material of construction of all process equipment and arrangement of the equipment needed to ensure proper functioning of the plant line size and finally the process and finally the principal instrumentation okay so what is the process design 
process design basically connects different factors which are associated with the process. For example, the chemical and physical operations. Okay. Now, uh, being a now, being a chemical engineer, you should understand what is a chemical operation and what is a physical operation. Chemical operation is that operation where we say that property of the material changes. Okay. Chemical operation is basically that operation where property of the material changes. What is the meaning of that? Let us say if I am considering one reactor where component A and B reacts to give uh, let us say C and D. Okay. So, property of C and D will definitely be different than property of A and B. It means we entirely get different material when reaction will take place. Okay. So, that we call as the chemical operation. Fine. Now, what is physical operation? Physical operation means property of the material is not changing at all. To give an example, let us say if I have to transport a material in a chemical plant from this uh, location to, to this location. Okay. Now, what will happen? Material which is transporting from this location to this location is not changing. Okay. If I am supplying the coal, it will remain the coal till the end. Okay. However, what I am doing, I am only transporting from one location to another location. So, the, therefore, it is basically called as physical operation, okay, where property of the material is not changing. Okay. To give another example, let us say uh, as I have already discussed that A and B reacts to give C and D. Okay. Now, if I want to separate C and D, Okay. What will happen? I have to carry out some operations so that C and D we can obtain with high purity. Fine, or the quality of C and D will be higher when I am separating that. Okay. So what basically I am doing? I am only uh, doing the physical operation. I am only considering the physical operation over here so that my product C and D will uh, will be separated. Okay. So, that is the physical operation. Okay. So, I hope you understand the difference of chemical and physical operation. Now, if I carry out these physical and chemical operation, it will be carried out at certain operating conditions, okay. certain temperature and pressure you can say. So, in chemical process design, we have to decide these operating conditions along with the chemical and physical operations. Now, if I am saying that I am fixing the operating condition, what basically I am doing? Okay. Where I am fixing that? That fixation occurs in a chemical equipment okay, or in a chemical unit. Fine. Now, if I am saying that chemical unit, it means I have to decide the major specification means its dimensions. Okay. What should be its height diameter, what should be its internal structure and all that will depend on the duty or the capacity of the equipment. Okay. So, if you see what I am doing, I am trying to connect all these factors in a single process and therefore, I am calling as a complete process or the process design. Okay. So, it includes chemical physical operation, it includes units or equipment with a specified uh, capacity, with a specified duties, with a specified operating conditions. Okay. Now, next is what? Next is I have to arrange these equipment in a proper manner. Okay. Arrangement means what? Which equipment should come first? Which equipment should come later on? Okay. To give an example, if I am producing C and D using A and B. Okay. So, first of all, I have to put the reactor where A and B will react and then C and D will be produced and then I can separate C and D. Okay. So, obviously, separator will come later than the reactor. So, how I am arranging different equipment, it will basically in such a manner so that the proper functioning of the plant should be ensured. Okay? Because what my aim is, I have to get high quality product. 
ok. So, to get that product how to get that product how these equipment will be placed in a chemical plant that we call as basically the arrangement of the equipment ok. Now, once I am placing those equipment how I will connect those equipment with each other ok that will be done through pipelines ok. So, arrangement after arrangement we will basically connect the lines or we can call that as pipelines and we will decide the dimension also. Dimension means what? Its length as well as diameter and finally, we will discuss or we will uh, focus on the principal instrumentation that what will be the measuring devices. Let us say flow meter etcetera or thermocouple where I have to put um, all these we have to decide with pr principal instrumentation. So, you see as far as process design is concerned we have to focus on all these factors uh, in such a way so that I can get the proper product ok. I hope it is clear. So, if I focus on the previous discussion what we can uh, conclude? We can conclude that process design basically gives the process flow sheet ok and that plot and that process flow sheet must satisfy material and energy balance ok. These are basically the thumb rules to check whether process is uh, in balance or not. So, the basic thumb rule is energy and material balance ok. So, we have to ensure that each flow sheet should satisfy material energy balance and in which individual equipment must have proper specifications. Okay. So, that is the complete flow sheet and my design ends there when I am uh, having a complete flow sheet ok. Now, further varying degree of thoroughness of a process design may be required for different purposes ok. So, what is the meaning of varying degree of uh, thoroughness? It means if a process is complicated enough ok, if a process is complicated enough we have to give sufficient thought before finalizing the flow sheet, before finalizing the design ok. So, complexity as complexity of the process increases we have to give a sufficient thought and thoroughness of the process should increase ok. So, that is basically the step of process design ok. So, now we will discuss the different steps involved in process design ok. We have, we have usually 6 step, the first step is the conception and definition ok. Now, what is this conception and definition? When you uh, start uh, design a process, first of all you be, you, first of all you should be clear that what product you want to produce. Okay, because accordingly you will decide the process, accordingly you will decide the raw material and other uh, factors. So, first of all you have to uh, conceptualize or define that what product we have to develop or we have to produce ok. So, once I am having this second step is the flow sheet development ok. Now, how we will develop this flow sheet? Let us say if I want to make product a ok. If I want to make product A ok. To make product A we will have different routes ok. We may have different routes and we have to select the proper route. We have to select the proper route and proper route means what? We have to select proper flow sheet ok. So, in that way we can first conceptualize that I have to produce product A and then accordingly I will decide the proper flow sheet of that. Okay. Next is once I have decided the process flow sheet, I will be aware that what equipment I am including in that uh, flow sheet ok. So, after uh, so after deciding the equipment we have to carry out design of each equipment thoroughly. So, that I can put proper specifications of the equipment in process flow sheet fine. So, once process flow sheet will be done we have to design the equipment and after that we will carry out the economic analysis ok. Because economic analysis includes operating parameters 
as well as capital parameters. Operating parameters means what? Operating cost. Okay. Capital parameters means capital cost and these cost cannot be completed until unless I will not complete the design of equipment. Okay. So, economic analysis I have to perform once I will complete the detailed equipment design. Okay. And if I am considering economic design, why it is important? Because economic analysis gives me the idea that if I sell this product, let us say if I am preparing product A, if I sell product A, how much profit I have to obtain? Okay? If that profit is sufficient for me, then only I will go for production, otherwise I will not um, install the plant, I will not start the operation in this. So, economic analysis is very important, but that will be done once equipment design will be over. Okay? Once I am having economic design, once I am having economic analysis, I will optimize the process. Optimize means what? Optimization means I have to maximize the profit. Okay, I have to minimize the losses. Okay. Optimization basically considers the condition where I have to, where I am getting maximum throughput, okay. where I am get, getting maximum outcome from the process. Okay. So, optimization usually on which parameter we do? As I have told you that economic analysis is very important. So, optimization is usually done on economic analysis only. Okay. To give an example, let us say if I am considering operating cost and capital cost. Okay. Addition of these two operating cost and capital cost gives me total annual cost. Okay. As far as optimization is concerned, this total annual cost must be minimized. Okay. So, in optimization, we can consider total annual cost minimization as an objective function. Okay? Or let me put in different way, we have to uh, consider total annual cost as objective function which I have to minimize. Fine? In another way, if I am saying that profit is very important for me, so I have to consider profit as objective function which I have to maximize. Fine. In the similar line, I can consider losses also. So, once all these factors, all these steps will be completed, then I will prepare a complete report that this much will be the total production, this will be the total, com this will be a complete flow sheet, design of different equipment we have done and this will be the complete economic analysis. So, all that we have to report. Okay. Now, in this particular course, we will focus on design of equipment because that is the main aim of this course. Okay. So, I have already discussed the steps involved in process design. Okay. Now, we will discuss what is the nature of design, what I am saying that this is a design. Okay. And here, I will focus on uh, definition of design in more philosophical level than the technical level. Okay. Now, as far as uh, nature of design is concerned, design is a creative activity. Design means what? Design means you are producing something new, okay, which is not available. Okay. Otherwise, that will be considered as a repeated activity. However, I am saying that design is a creative activity. It means the imaginative exercise you carry out to, to um, to do the design. Okay. So, first of all you basically imagine whatever you are going to produce okay. and then you carry out some analysis, some activity to complete or to uh, address that uh, imagination. Okay. So, so, that is basically you are developing a new thing which is very satisfying and most rewarding activity. Okay. Now, this is not only related to engineering, it is related to other fields also. Let us say if you are designing a dress, okay, if you are uh, uh, making a statue, okay, whatever you are doing, it means you have to first think about that, you have to imagine that, so that will be become a creative activity. So, in the similar, 
So, in the similar line design a chemical plant is an creative activity. Okay. Now, if I am saying that this is a creative activity to so what I am doing basically I am combining the ideas, okay. I am mixing the ideas, I am putting together the ideas which are related to produce a product. Okay. So, design means to synthesize the idea properly. Okay. So, that is basically the nature of design and nature is what this is a creative activity. Okay. So, if I am considering design, this is design step is well before then the commencement of the project. Okay. If you see we have to first think and then we can design and then we can start the project. Okay. So, if I am saying that designer, so if I am asking that what is the work of designer? Okay. The work of designer is to set an objective. Okay. Objective means depending upon the need okay. and what is that need it and what is that need that I will discuss in next slide. Okay. So, if you see that uh, uh, what is the work of designer it basically starts with a spec specific objective evaluating different design possibilities and arrive at best way of achieving that objective. It means what he has to think about different combination of uh, different combination of limitations, what limitation he has and then accordingly he has to reach to the definite objective whether it is a chair, whether it is a bridge or it is a chemical product for a chemical engineer. Okay. That is basically the nature of design. Now, next is the design objective. What is the design objective and that I am saying as the need. Okay. Now, need is what? Need is as far as chemical engineering is concerned, need is basically the public demand. Okay, if you see the public demand of a product and that we can consider as a commercial opportunity for a chemical engineer and that, and that commercial opportunity can be decided by sales and marketing organization. First of all, we will focus on the public requirement, then we will decide that what would be the suitable product for that uh, and then we will we and then we consider that as a need okay and that need we are referring as objective okay now once i am having the objective i will have some sub objectives also sub objective means what what will be the route to meet that objective okay what would be the raw material what would be the economic conditions all these things we consider further when I have decided the objective and so we are calling that as sub objectives. Okay. So, once I am having the objective I will decide sub objective and then I will carry out the overall process design. Now, so as I have told you that is it is entirely in the hand of designer that he has to decide what process he has to consider to make the product. It means there are different constraints. Okay. So, some design constraints I am discussing over here. If you see this image, here I am having external constraints and internal constraints. Okay. External constraints are shown with the solid line as you can see the um, uh, as you can see the outer periphery. Okay. All these we have the external constraint and similarly dotted line which is the inner periphery it is showing the internal constraints. So, what is basically external constraints and what is internal constraint is external constraints are those constraints which are not in a hand of designer. Okay. Internal constraints are basically in hand of the designer. Okay. So, what are those external constraints? I am discussing a few example of that. So, first is let me focus on envi let me focus on government control okay to give an example if you consider the chemical plant there are strict rules and regulation from the government side that uh, we do not have to discharge waste okay that is very important guideline okay so 
designer will do nothing with that he has to follow that constraint okay and what is the meaning of that he has to treat the waste properly he do he cannot throw that uh, waste in environment okay because of the government norms okay economic constraint economic constraint is what would be the price of raw material okay if some negotiation is possible that can be done but that is very rare okay if that price is set by the government economic constraint will be uh, a criteria for designer to choose a proper process okay safety regulation he has to follow he cannot do anything and standards and codes it means when he is designing he has to follow some guidelines let's say if we going to design the pressure vessel we have to follow indian standard code that is is2825 1969 okay so all these constraint he has to follow he cannot play with this okay however he can consider some constraint which he can vary for example for example method okay method means if he he can uh, have the option to uh, choose the manufacturing of the equipment he can make a choice there okay he can choose the process as i have told you different routes are available to convert raw material into product so he can choose the proper process to convert that raw material into product okay process conditions he can change he can uh, make slight changes there okay materials raw material he can choose personal means how much he can invest or how much he has to uh, take a loan etc okay and time okay time means what he has to give the product in definite time let's say if i am saying that i am going to design a product which uh, production will start after let's say 4 or 5 years it will not work for me okay so time is very important now as far as external constraint is concerned most important constraint is the economic constraint okay because everything will depend on that until unless i am not getting proper profit i will not make a product i will not install a chemical plant okay and so i will not design okay and as far as internal constraint is concerned time is very important because he has to give the product in a definite time okay so these are basically the design constraints okay now till now what we have discussed we have basically discussed factors which are uh, associated with the pr process design okay either it is constraint or different uh, factors were there and now we will focus on chemical equipment design okay because this is the part of process design first of all we have developed the basis of process design and then we are going to discuss chemical equipment design okay so the projects in chemical engineering which require designing can be divided into three types the first is modification and addition of existing plant okay what is the meaning of this if i have to modify the existing plant some new technique is available and i have to install that new technique i have to design the equipment okay addition means what if i am adding additional product in my existing plant let's say if i am producing c and d okay in which only c was important to me i am separating the component focusing on c component only okay however if i am finding that d is also important so i have to carry out some um, analysis to make d more so make uh, d of higher quality i hope you are getting that so this in that way i have to design the proper equipment so chemical equipment design will play a role there okay second is increasing the capacity of the existing plant okay in that case i have to design the new equipment though those equipment will remain same okay i am not changing the equipment because only i am increasing the capacity so let's say i am having uh, previously one heat exchanger i am putting another heat exchanger of different capacity like that okay so i have to design that heat exchanger so and next is 
uh, development of new process based on laboratory research and pilot plant study. Okay. So, you see here we have uh, to design the equipment for new plant as well as for existing plant okay. and when I am designing Okay, when I am designing what basically I am doing, I am basically specifying the proper functioning of the equipment and specifying means what? We have to decide the operating condition of the equipment. So, that conditions such as temperature and pressure under which equipment is expected to perform are specified by the process requirements. Okay. So, you can understand over here that at three level we can contribute in designing okay. and designing means what? We have to specify the operating condition of the equipment and accordingly we have to decide the di dimension of the equipment. Okay. Now, we will ensure that equipment should perform satisfactorily under all possible conditions. Okay. So, for, that, for that purpose, I have to design the equipment and I have to test that equipment at maximum possible condition. Okay. So, overall satisfactory performance and reliability of the equipment are dependent on following factors and these factors are first is the optimum process condition. Optimum process condition means where I am getting maximum output. Okay. So, equipment should be operated satisfactorily at that optimum process conditions. Okay. Next is appropriate material of construction. We have to choose appropriate material of construction, strength and rigidity of the equipment or the component that is very important that it should not fail while uh, carrying out the operation. Okay. Satisfactory performance of mechanism and adequate operating range. Okay. So, here you see operating range. Okay. So, initially we have discussed that it should operate at maximum optimum condition. So, initially we have discussed that it should operate at optimum condition and then it, sh it should uh, uh, be operated in a range because uh, if I am saying that temperature is 20 degree Celsius that temperature may vary during the operation, it may vary let us say from 18 to 22. So, that possibility in equipment or that flexibility in the equipment should be there. Okay. We have to focus on reliable method of fabrication, then I will, then I can say that satisfactory performance can be obtained from equipment. Okay. Ease of maintenance and repair that is very important that maintenance part should be easier in equipment. Okay. And then we have to, uh, we have ease of operation and control okay. that is important and finally, the safety requirement. So, all these factors should met properly and then only I can say that design is better or design is acceptable. Okay. So, that is about the equipment design and process design. So, now you must get the idea that what is the importance of proper design of the equipment and proper design of process. Okay. So, now we will focus on that on which plant we should apply that design. Okay. So, for that I am considering chemical industry, obviously being a chemical engineer we are going to design the equipment for chemical industry. Okay. So, first of all let me focus on chemical industry and that I am explaining through onion diagram. Okay. Onion diagram you all should know that uh, if I am considering a chemical process where let us say A and B is converted into C and D. Okay. So, that A and B reaction should be carried out in reactor. Okay. So, reactor is a core of chemical plant okay. and if I am considering the onion diagram and if I am and if I am considering the onion diagram, it means the innermost section of that we consider as a reactor. We consider that. So, innermost uh, layer of the onion we can consider as a reactor. Okay. So, here you see we have the onion and the innermost section is the reactor which we can consider as 
the core of a chemical process. Okay. Now, once A and B will be generated, we can produce C and D. So, obviously, M, uh, so obviously once I am having C and D, I have to separate C and D. So, separator, if you see separator here is the next layer to the reactor. Okay. So, we can say this is the second most inner layer of an onion diagram. And once I am having the reactor, you see in this diagram, uh, whatever stream is exiting, okay, it may require cooling, it may require heating okay, and some uh, and feed to separator also require heating or cooling. What is the meaning of that? Once I am having the separator, I have to install heat exchanger network. Okay, either it is heater cooler or simple heat exchanger. So, heat exchanger network will so heat exchanger network will be the third most uh, layer from inside. Okay. And finally, we can have the utilities because uh, if I am saying that I am installing heater and cooler, there I have to provide definite utility, let us say cooling tower let us say cooling water or uh, steam okay. and once I am having that utility, I have to generate that utility in a chemical plant. So, I have to focus on site wide utilities. Okay. So, these are basically different layers of chemical plant, uh, we can represent that plant effectively through onion diagram. Okay. Now, we will discuss that what equipment we are going to design. Okay. Till now you must have the basis that why you are studying this course, where you are applying this, I mean at what layer of chemical plant you can address while studying this course and now we will focus on different equipment we are going to design. The first one is shell and tube heat exchanger, very important equipment, condenser, reboiler, crystallizer, evaporator distillation column and pack column. So, if you see almost all equipment important equipment we have considered in this and when I am considering the onion diagram or at what layer at which layer you can focus on while designing these courses. So, while designing these uh, at what layer you can focus on while designing these equipment. Okay. So, as far as shell and tube heat exchanger is concerned, this will come in second layer and uh, condenser is also come in second layer, reboiler is again a heat exchanger. So, it will be on second layer and then we have crystallizer and evaporator. We can separate here and we can uh, transfer heat also. So, it will focus on two layer separator as well as heat exchanger then distillation column and packed bed in second layer that is a separator. Okay. So, what is the meaning of designing? Okay. Meaning of designing in this course is to decide the dimension of the equipment to decide the internal structure of the equipment. Okay. In this case, I am not in this course, I am not focusing on uh, thickness of different components of the equipment because this part I have already covered in my another NPTEL course that is equipment design mechanical aspects. So, for this uh, part 1 you can um, focus on that however, part 2 I am going to cover in this uh, course only. Okay. So, as far as meaning of designing is concerned what is the meaning corresponding to each equipment? First of all, if I am considering shell and tube heat exchanger, condenser and reboiler, all these he equipment are basically heat exchangers only. So, what is the meaning of design here is we have to compute overall heat transfer coefficient and pressure drop. Okay. We have to compute this and we have to ensure that it should be within the permissible limit. Okay. Crystallizer design means we have to decide the height, diameter, residence time inside the equipment. Okay. Evaporator design means we have to uh, we have to calculate the steam consumption and we have to find out heat transfer area. And in pack column we have to calculate bed height, column diameter, column internal features. All these we have to decide in designing of packed column. Now, further in distillation column we have to 
consider the ideal number of trays okay that is for the binary system and for multi component system plate efficiency plate hydraulic parameters and finally we will focus on mechanical design okay so here i am considering mechanical design only for the distillation column or tall vessels for other equipment mechanical design course is prepared separately that you can see okay so i hope you will have a basis to study this course we have discussed different factors associated to the process design and uh, equipment design and here i am having some of the references uh, which you can focus on like we have very important books okay and uh, all these books you must have read in your uh, chemical engineering courses okay so and now i am summarizing this video okay in this video importance and utility of the course process equipment design is discussed design objective and constraints are discussed different equipment to be covered in this course that we have already described and meaning of designing is discussed associated with different equipment okay so that's all for now thank you